Right then, good morning everybody, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever it is, wherever you happen to be when you're watching this video. My name is Paul, I'm also called Knickknack, I'm the brains behind Knickknack's Old Peculiar, the world's most boringly repetitive blog, more on that later. I do the daily teaser set of brain teaser quizzes, I talk about movies as and when and if I ever get a chance to see another one, I'll try and tell you about it. I also talk about TV shows I'm watching. Just recently I've called Been Watching for All Mankind's Fourth Season. I'll be watching the next episode of that tomorrow. I'll have my review up the day after. Please keep your eyes peeled. Please subscribe to this channel in order to catch more stuff about film and TV. I've also, over the past few days, been watching uh, the 360th anniversary Doctor Who specials. Tonight is Sunday the 10th. Last night was Saturday the 9th, and last time was when I saw the most recent and last of the 60th anniversary specials called The Giggle. I wanted to tell you what I thought about it. The Giggle opens with a by now traditional Hooniverse ident, and then shifts to the murky streets of Soho in London in the 1920s where Charles Banerjee, played by Charlie DeMello, is in a local toy shop called The Emporium, where the shop's very iffy owner and toy maker, Neil Patrick Harris, sells Mr. Banerjee a puppet called Stooky Bill, a puppet that Mr. Banerjee's boss, inventor John Logie Baird, John Mackey, or is very interested in owning. Baird's created a little something that needs testing with something that won't get burnt to death by strong lights. Post titles, we see the 14th Doctor, David Tennant, on the streets of modern London where people are rioting, quite literally rioting, in the streets. The Doctor manages to stop one of the rioters from being run over in front of him and finds that the unnamed pedestrian is convinced that one, the road is his, he's got sole right of way, two, the pedestrian is convinced that he, and only he, is right about anything, and three, so is everybody else. The Doctor finds out that all this started two days earlier, and it's only then that the cavalry arrives in the shape of two choppers from Unit. Something planned by an old enemy is having an effect. Right, what did I make of the giggle? What did I make of this last 60th anniversary special? I think we've got quite a bit to unpack. In fact, I've seen my script and my blog entry for this episode. We have a lot to unpack. Let's get the sad bit out of the way first. Wilf. We didn't get to see Wilf, the grandfather of Donna Noble, the character so wonderfully played by the late... Bernard Cribbins in this episode. We didn't get to see that. The body double used for the episode was cleverly hidden and the character written out and into a place of safety early on in the episode. So it's it's sad not to see the character in the episode, I think. That word sad is going to get used a lot. Regretfully, the late Bernard Cribbins was too frail to film anything for this episode, only having the strength to film his few minutes for Wild Blue Yonder, the last episode. It's something I find very understandable. He was 93, after all, um, but also quite saddening. The man was much loved and is going to be much missed, and you get the sense that the cast would have loved to him, have him in this episode. Let's get a move on, shall we? The giggle itself tells us the story of a returning toy maker, a returning enemy who's back to introduce chaos into the universe, conquer the Earth after hiding the laughter of the title in the People of Earth's TV screens. That's how he's hypnotising them and sending them mad. And inevitably to beat the Doctor at his own game after being defeated by the Doctor's first incarnation back in the original the Celestial Tom Maker, back in 1966. And it has to be said, Neil Patrick Harris's performance is very intense, very watchable. He is madder than a box of monkeys on acid, 
and is completely, utterly riveting. And it comes with a, a foul German accent that sounds both menacing and like it wants to join the cast of a low, a low. It's, it's having a good good thinking about it. Let's move rapidly on there. Either way, it's a superb performance, as are those of both Tennant and Tate in the series. As is the supporting cast. Gemma Redgrave as Kate Lethbridge-Stewart is as good as ever. Ruth Mangley as Sheila, the scientific advisor, does a great little job. And the returning Bonnie Langford, the returning Bonnie Langford as Mel Bush is quite something to see. Back in the proverbial day, I felt... Mel Bush, Langford's character, was possibly underused and certainly badly used, I felt. She spent most of her run with the Sixth and Seventh Doctors either pontificating about characters or screaming ahead of, which is not the sort of thing I'd expect from a character that's supposed to be a computer program or a coder. Um, or at least it's not the sort of behaviour I'd expect from any of the coders I've met. Carrot juice be damned. They're more into a good pint of beer. So my point there is that Mel wasn't well used in the classic series. She was a 1970s era screamer in the 1980s era of the show. So having Bonnie Langford return as Mel doing something technical in Units HQ, and by explaining what an arpeggio is, go look it up, um, she made a useful contribution to the plot. I think she did more in those few minutes than she did in the entire classic series. All that, and finding out how she got home after journeying through space and time with Savile and Glitz, was both welcome and watchable. Let's talk about that plot, shall we, and the writing Russell T. Davis has done for it. I will happily admit I really shouldn't comment or comment on the writing or critique the writing because I will also happily admit to not being a writer. I am just a hobbyist blogger who, despite some 15 years of experience, stroke practice, and a nearby copy of Hart's, New Hearts Rules, which is one of two default style guides, I still only have half an idea of where apostrophes are supposed to go. I am still, with all those years typing away at a blog post and with the reference material I've got sitting up there, I could not tell you the difference between a verb and an adverb, between an adverb and an adjective. I really couldn't. With that minimal experience and that minimal confused knowledge, I couldn't write an episode of TV or a short story if you paid me. So I can only look at something like The Giggle and be aware that something like that is completely beyond me. In point of fact, a bad TV episode would be beyond me. Um, and The Giggle is certainly not a bad episode of TV, far from it. In terms of pacing and in terms of action, and as far as I can understand how these things are done, I've come away feeling impressed by what I've seen. About my only concern other things that I can understand and even then I think it's not necessarily something bad that I've spotted merely my own limited understanding of tools available and of the creative process involved with writing this episode I think I've spotted a couple of stock plot elements some reused elements and thought I'd highlight them the reason I mentioned that is that to me, they seem an obvious thing to have spotted. I blog. You knew that, possibly, if you're watching me for a while. And you possibly noticed the daily teasers, the daily quizzes I've posted onto Knickknacks Old Peculiar, my blog, over the years. And after all this time, I get just a little bit formulaic with them. Most of the teasers by now will consist of an intro. Something I'm planning for the day, something I did yesterday, something that's maybe exploded in my face or going to happen. Then I will move to the main part of the quizzes themselves. I will tell you who took part in yesterday's quiz, what the scores were, what today's questions are, and what yesterday's questions and answers were. The variations in those posts lies in making the intro as different as possible, and making the questions as different as possible, and making 
everything as different as possible within that standard format. I try not to reuse questions, but if I have to, I try to make them as different as I can where possible. So I think I can spot reuse or repetition. And with the giggle, I couldn't help but notice sub reuse, the smaller one of the two. We know that the, uh, the toy maker has defeated and captured the master in between then and now. It's trapped him into a gold tooth. It's a gold tooth that is snatched away by a mysterious hand at the end of the episode. A scene that's copied from The Last of the Time Lords, also by Russell T. Davis, when a ring that's the only remains of the master is taken away by an unknown hand. So it's something we've seen before, and it's something that I'm convinced that going on the earlier use of something similar, I'm convinced that that tooth will be reused in the similar way to the ring being reused to revive the master. We'll have to see, but that's what I am convinced is going to happen. Whilst it's also not exactly the same, I think I've spotted the the big reuse here as well. The um, by now much to, talked about regeneration scene or by generation scene, where David Tennant's fourteenth Doctor and Shooty Yat was. 15th Doctor, split apart like an amoeba, it sees Tennant's 14th Doctor retiring to Earth to stay with Donna, much as the cloned Metacrisis 10th Doctor stayed on an alternative Earth at the end of Journey's End. It's repetition. It may be a newly worked up repetition, but it's repetition. Am I saying that's a bad thing? No, I'm not. It's Russell T. Davis using a couple of familiar tools, a couple of familiar plot devices to write an entertaining story quickly and efficiently, and in much the same way as he did last time, set up stories for later. Right, just as a, a side issue here, or possibly side issues, part of the giggle shows the toy maker giving... Donna, a puppet show, telling her about the companions between when she left the 10th Doctor and joined the 14th Doctor. There's also a later scene where the two Doctors discuss their shared lines. They're both beautifully done, and I will give Shooty Gatwell there a lot of credit for his scene with David Tennant. It's very well done on his part. But personally, I felt those scenes were both well done. I mentioned Shooty, he did good on that one and are aimed at both younger and newer watchers of the show, telling them that there's more of the universe around, old and new, to explore. It's filling in a few background details for them. I also noticed the 15th mention of Mavic Chen, the human villain of the Daleks' master plan. I'm assuming that's a coincidental mention, a, a bit of colour to tell and reassure older fans that, yes, this is Doctor Who, it's still the same show. But I'm wondering if there's a possible release in animated form or live action form of the missing Dalek Master Plan. I don't know, but it would be nice to see that happen. But, to go back to my main thread here, a thread while I was talking about stories, First things first, was the giggle a good story? Yes, it bloody was, I think. We saw an entertaining story that introduces us to an old foe. It ties off some very loose threads from 60 years worth of history. And it sees an old version of the sent ships. It sees an older version of the show's central character retired in a way that means he can be called upon later, but can be safely ignored until then. It also introduces a brand new shiny version of that main central character. There's possibly points there. First, let's talk about the now retired 14th Doctor. I know that there is talk of a potential unit spin-off. I'm assuming that if Tennant's second version of the Doctor, an Earthbound version of the, of the Doctor, is needed for a spin-off, he can be used for that spin-off. I'm concerned the character could overshadow any spin-off he's in, but I'm also aware that, presumably in order to avoid that overshadowing, 
I'm aware that the Doctor's appearances in the Sarah Jane adventures and in class were kept to a minimum. Secondly, I couldn't not mention the 15th Doctor, played by Shooty Gaswell. Now, I've seen him in this 60th anniversary episode, and I've seen him in the trailer for The Church on Ruby Road, and it strikes me Shooty's performance is just ever so slightly charming and just ever so slightly bloody cheeky. He's got that kind of little boy feel to him. I think we could well be... In for a very interesting time come Christmas. But at any rate, this is where I think I'm going to have to love you and leave you, except for possibly telling you a couple of things. Tonight, as I think I've already said, I'm recording this on Sunday the 10th of December. Tomorrow is, of course, Monday the 11th of December, and I'm going to be watching Goldilocks, the next episode of For All Mankind Series 4. I will be watching that tomorrow. I will have my written and video reviews of that up, hopefully by Tuesday the 12th of December. I would love it if you subscribed so you could, could catch those. You'd be welcome to leave me a comment either way. I will be watching The Church on Ruby Road, the Doctor Who uh, first Doctor Who episode that's completely shooties on Christmas Day. And I will have my written and video reviews of that released on Boxing Day. Hopefully I will see you then, but until then, and in the immortal words of number six, be seeing you.